What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Nash and today I'm going to be talking about why I regret going to college. So this is going to be based on my personal experiences as well as my friends uh, personal experiences. So I went around asking all my friends about the things that they regret when it comes to going to college and I put it on a list. So it is not going to be in any type of order. It's just going to be those things that I'm going to put in my two cents uh, to each bullet point. But the first thing is going to be um, studying to pass and not to understand. So this usually happens when people are obsessed with having straight A's or A pluses as well as keeping a 4.0 GPA. So people that do that, they're going to do anything they can, everything that they can in order to pass the class. For the most part, it's going to be memorizing for the exam, right? Studying for the exam. If there's an exam, if you're studying for anything, you're studying for the quiz, you want to make sure that you pass that quiz or that exam so you can keep your straight A or your GPA. Now, when you do that, you're not really, you know, studying to understand the, the concept. You're studying to pass, right? You're studying based on the exam. Now, whenever you graduate, when you go into the real world, they're going to ask you to apply the knowledge that you learned. And you're going to realize that the only thing you know how to do is going to be how to pass exams, right? But you can't really apply that knowledge to, uh, you know, to the, whatever job you're going to be doing. So it's important to study, to understand, not to just pass the exam. And it's also okay to balance both. Sometimes you might need to study to pass the exam just because it is the final exam or the exam is 60% of your grade. So you have to study to pass the exam. But it is more important to make sure that you're fully understanding the concept, whether you do it after the exam or before the exam or during the summer, you need to understand the concepts. The next one is going to be not joining student organizations related to your major. Now, it's easy to join organizations that are your hobbies, right? If you like playing tennis, you join the tennis uh, student organization. If you like playing, whatever you like playing, you join those. But it's important to join organizations that are related to your major, right? So if you're a finance major, you might join uh, an investment society or uh, you might join the accounting society or maybe you might join a business a fraternity or things like that. So this is going to allow you to connect with people that are going to be in the same field as you, right? Imagine you graduate, you find out you're the only one that's not getting a job or your friends have a job. Now, if you have this network of people that, you know, you were in the same organization with, they're probably applying for the same jobs. They'll give you some tips on what they're doing and possibly help you get a job, right? So that is what you need. And that allows you to build a network of people that are doing the same thing as you. Now, it's okay to join multiple, right? You can join one that's related to, you know, your hobbies and then you, you have to have an organization that is related to your major or something that you want to do after college, right? Uh, and I'm assuming you're majoring in something that's related to what you want to do after college. The next one is going to be retaking classes. So in college, retaking classes is super easy, right? All you got to do is sign up for the same class the next year or the next semester after you fail it, right? Or and sometimes people get maybe um, a C or a B in the class, right? but they want to keep their 4.0 GPA. So they will retake the class in order to get a better grade. Now, this ends up being costly, right? Because they're not just, you know, charging you for one class. You're going to get charged for all the classes that you retake. So the best advice I could give you is going to be only take the class once, right? So if the class says in order to pass this class, you need to make a C, but then you make a D, then you can retake the class. But if you make a C and you pass the class, there's no need to retake the class because that is going to cost you a lot more especially if you are using student loans. Aside from that, it's also going to add to your time in college. So it might take you a little longer to graduate college. It might add a semester, two semesters. So try to avoid retaking classes when you don't need to, right? And uh, the next one is going to be picking the wrong major and sticking with it. So when you're in college and you're majoring in anything, you should be able to kind of like have an idea of what the job market is like. So if you were, take, if you were doing a major and you know that that there's not in, there's not enough jobs out there for people that are in that major then you should probably switch to something else a good example would be marketing right you're going to go to school for four years to do marketing when someone who has a certification on how to use the software or you know how to use google ads and things like that can get the same job and probably get paid more because they have a certification and they don't have a degree so you have to really think about those things uh you know you might major in something that you enjoy doing, but are you going to be able to get a job, right? What does the job market look like uh, for that specific major? And if it doesn't look too well, 
you know, switch, switch your major, go to something else that's going to help you actually get a job. The next one is going to be not getting work experience, right? So the biggest mistake that a lot of college students make is going to be thinking that internships are the only work experience that you need to have when you're in college or the only work experience that you can get when you're in college. They avoid things like part-time jobs, especially business students, right? They're trying to get the internship at JP Morgan. They're trying to get the internship at uh, whatever big bank or big companies. When you can literally go work part-time as a data entry clerk or as a financial analyst assistant or as a finance assistant, uh, doing these things, these are gonna give you work experience, right? They're not gonna give you the same experience as someone who uh, went and, and did an internship at JP Morgan, but these are things you can add to your resume. They're gonna count as work experience, right? So if you're not able to get those big internships, apply for you know the, the part-time finance jobs, right? Apply for those jobs. Uh, I have some videos on here on, on what, type of, what types of jobs you can apply to as part-time, and you can add those to your resume as uh, work experience and they're going to help you too when it comes to doing the actual work when you you know you're going to be able to transfer uh, that experience into uh, your actual full-time job the next one is going to be choosing the wrong college so this is uh, related to target schools right so there's so many people that want to go into investment banking uh, many people so many people that want to go into um, you know different things and um, there's this thing called target schools, right? Target schools are essentially schools that uh, the big companies go to, like investment banking. If you want to get into investment banking, you have to go to a target school. So if you don't do your research and you go to, a, you know, the first school that accepts you or the first school that you want to go to, and, you know, you end up applying for investment banking and you're not getting any responses. And at the same time, while you're in school, you don't really get to take classes that are related to investment banking. So you need to, if, 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 if you know that the job that you want to get into requires you to go to a target school where the companies come to the college and recruit, uh, you know, the, um, the students, right, because it is a target school, you want to make sure that you really, really focus on that. You want to get into those target schools, not go to any random school because you're not going to have the same opportunities as someone who is in a target school. The next one is going to be not thinking about post-graduation. All right, so a lot of college students think about, you know, they live in the moment, right? I'm waiting, you know, for graduation. I'm ready to walk the stage. But you're not thinking about what's going to happen after that. You need to be thinking about post-grad, you know, your second year of college. First year is fine because you're kind of like getting used to the independence. You're getting used to, you know, making friends and things like that. That's fine. But your second year should be thinking about, thinking about post-grad. And at doing it your second year of college, it's going to allow you to kind of like have an idea of what you like and what you don't like. And as you move up to your third year, fourth year, maybe fifth year, you should have a clear idea of what it is that you want to do after college. And knowing this information is going to allow you to apply to those jobs or apply to whatever you want to do after you graduate. You just don't want to be that one person that graduates college, you finish walking the stage, you go get a nice meal with your family, now you're back home, you're like, what's next, right? You do not want to be that person, I'm telling you, you're going to be waiting six months applying for jobs while your friends are working good jobs. And the next one is going to be going to grad school right after undergrad. So there's a couple of reasons as to why this happens. Sometimes it is the only option that people have. For example, I have a friend that majored in marketing and then they realized that it was really, really tough to uh, get a marketing job with, uh, you know, with a college degree because all the jobs are taken by people that have uh, certifications, right? So what he did was he went to grad school and uh, he went to get a master's in finance. So he switched from marketing to finance. So that's how you can fix it. If you happen to stay in the wrong major, you know, for the four years and you, you realize that, oh yeah, I'm not going to be able to get a job with this degree. You can go to grad school and fix it. You can get a master's in accounting, master's in finance, master's in this. You know, that's what you want. That's how you can fix it. So, which is okay. And sometimes there are people that believe that, you know, getting a, having a master's degree with no work experience is going to mean that they get, you know, hired at higher positions or they get, uh, you know, more money, which is not going to be the case for the most part. You need work experience. So how this usually works is you graduate from undergrad and you go get some work experience. You kind of like figure out what you like. You know, this allows you to kind of like, you know, you can jump from different positions. You know, oh, I like working as an accountant. I like working in finance. Now, when you go back to grad school, 
you're gonna know exactly what you like doing because you have the work experience, right? Once you get that master's degree, maybe you're still working at the same company while you're getting your master's degree, you're gonna be, it's gonna be easier for you to get promoted to a higher position. So the main thing to take away is that you need work experience. Unless you have to, have to, have to go to grad school right after you finish your undergrad, you know, which means you're probably fixing something or maybe you might be in a major that says, you know, if you're if you majored in psychology undergrad, right? You're not going to get a good job with your undergrad degree. You need to go to grad school. So things like that you can't really change, but if you have a finance degree, there's no need for you to go to grad school right after you finish undergrad. Go get some work experience, right? If you're in accounting as well, you don't need to go to grad school right after you graduate from undergrad. Go get some work experience for 4 or 5 years and then go back to grad school. The next one is going to be double majoring. Sometimes there's no need to double major. I've seen people double major in accounting and finance. Uh, people double major in, you know, just different things. Sometimes that just creates a lot of stress for you and you don't really get to specialize in something. I know I made a video that talked about, you know, people that get paid the most, people that are not easy to replace on the job are people that specialize in something. So sometimes there's no need to double major, especially in, in finance and, and, and accounting, right? Those are very, very similar. You're just, at that time, you're wasting your time. You're also wasting your money because you have to take additional classes um, and those are going to cost you money. So there's no need to double major every time. What you can do instead is going to be getting a minor. And even minoring as well, some people get minors that are pointless. But when you get a minor, you're supposed to get a minor that supports your main degree, right? You don't want to get do two things that are the complete opposite of each other. So if you have a finance, if you're doing finance a finance degree you can minor in something like business analytics or anything related to that right just something that's going to support your main uh, degree the next one is going to be taking more student loans than you actually need so sometimes they'll give you let's say five thousand dollars for the semester this is how much you are going to be getting but then you realize that you only need three thousand a lot of people will just take the whole five thousand thinking it's free money and use it for other things so you're gonna have to pay that back and there's interest on it. So make sure that you only take what you need. The next one is gonna be not having roommates. Even if you don't like people, if you're an introvert and you don't really like hanging out with people, you don't like living with people, you're gonna have to change that because having roommates is gonna allow you to save so much money when it comes to rent. And if you do have roommates, that's gonna make it a lot easier for you to make friends with people. It's gonna teach you uh, communication. It's gonna teach you, it's gonna teach you a lot of things, if you've, especially if you've never had roommates before, uh, growing up um, this is going to teach you a lot of things a lot of life skills and dealing with people and things like that the next one is going to be signing up for random credit cards and maxing them out and then messing up your credit score so if you've been on campus on you know first day of school you're going to see these credit card companies you know you get two hundred dollars in bonus you get three hundred you get 150 and you're going to be signing up for all these credit cards and then you know you're going to use them and max them out so you want to make sure that you're not signing up for random credit cards and if you do make sure that you don't max them out and if you use them make sure you pay them all on time the next one's going to be not going to your professor's office hours so going to your professor's office hours especially if you like the subject if i if i was a finance major and i'm you know it's my junior year I'm not and I'm actually taking finance classes I would make sure to go to my professor's office hours right because that is where you're gonna be able to connect with your professor right he probably has real life experience I've learned that a lot of high-level finance professors actually worked in finance before they you know went back to teaching or they you know they transitioned to teaching and it's always good to get um, you know uh, insights from someone who actually worked uh, in finance or in whatever subject that you're studying in accounting in marketing whatever and uh, the professor is also going to be able to talk about maybe things that they're not able to talk about in class because not everyone cares about it, about those things and also if you don't like asking questions in class that is where you're going to have that is where you are going to have the opportunity to ask uh, those questions and uh, this was one of the things that i did with some professors that i actually liked i would go to their office hours and i would ask questions like how does this translate to you know working in actual job you know things like that and they were able to help me and eventually I ended up needing a letter of recommendation that was easy to ask right because the professor kind of like has an idea of who I am and the things that, that I care about and things that I always ask them about so that it helps you in so many ways being able to connect with the right professor the next one is going to be having no hobbies right so sometimes it's easy to think that you need to be studying 24 7 and not have any fun but it's important to have to do things that you actually enjoy because those actually help you kind of like refresh your mind right 
you don't want to be you don't want to be the person that's studying 24 7 right you make you want to make sure that you have hobbies and it also allows you to connect with people that uh, like the same things that you like right and uh, the next one is going to be trusting your academic advisor way too much you need to do your work before you even go visit at their office so if you know that you want you want to major in finance so if you're a finance major go to the geo university website look at the degree plan look at the classes that you're supposed to take and list them out okay first year first semester i want to take these five classes second semester i want to take these five now after you have that list you can go to your college advisor and you can tell them hey I plan on graduating in four years and this is what I have. These are the classes I want to take. Is there anything I should move or does this work with, you know, the degree plan, right? Now, this avoids you just going there and saying, what classes should I take? Because at the end of the day, uh, you're going to be stuck in college for five years when you're supposed to graduate in four years. And, you know, there, there are lots of stories from college students that were have been pushed back, you know, by semesters or maybe one semester. The next one is going to be not learning outside of class. It is important to also learn outside of class. I'm talking about, you know, platforms like YouTube, Udemy, things like that. Make sure you learn outside of class. Now, that is pretty much it for this video, guys. Let me know if I missed anything. If you guys want to see a part two, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.